Yeah, just uh, Scott mentions that Acts 10, 28 um, is just a proof uh, that Gentiles were not a part of the early church. Uh, in Acts 10, 28, and he said unto them, you know that it is not; it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nations. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Unlawful. There's no doubt. I had made a comment about that verse, um, Acts 10, 28. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, that was at, back up in Acts 10. 28, I've made a comment on that verse, um, there it is, um, Peter recounts why he's there and wants to know why he's been sent, interestingly, Peter points to the law to say that a Jew should not keep company with a Gentile, however, the Torah does not actually address that, that I can find, um, might be a good study, and I've checked other guys. Instead, Peter is most likely referring to the rabbinical teachings of the day. Um, or he's referring to Jesus' command that they go not into the way of the Gentiles with the gospel of the kingdom. So, um, but interesting, either way, Peter felt that it was unlawful. Uh, and I'm sure the others did also. But that's a good study. Uh, that's definitely uh, something uh, I'd like to find it in the Torah, but... I just don't, um, for the life of me, I can't see anything, but that's why we're here. Ask questions, study, <laughs> and um, keep digging in. But that's the first we need to look at, uh, for sure. And then uh, we got down into chapter number 11 yesterday, um, and the disciples and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God, and again, uh, that word of God that they had received came at the from the mouth of Peter. And of course, Peter only knew one thing. He only knew the gospel of the kingdom. So he couldn't have been sharing anything else with them. And when Peter was come to, up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision, of course, that's fellow Jews, contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Um... And we talked about how uh, significant it was for a Jew to eat with someone. It was partaking. That was what made what Judas did so egregious. He literally sopped with the Lord, became one with him, and then turned around and betrayed him. Um, but notice Peter's reception when he turns to Jerusalem. They were upset with him because he was um, reaching out to Gentiles with the word of God. Uh, and I pointed out, I mean, after all, wasn't he only obeying math, Matthew 28, 19, which says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, that's what he was doing. But obviously, Matthew, Matthew 28 doesn't mean what you and I have come to believe that it means. Uh, because they're upset with him for doing that. Um, I just lost my chapter when I accidentally shifted that screen. Um, Matthew 28 and verse number 19 was a commandment for them to take the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews, uh, not to the Gentiles. They were to take the gospel to all nations, and when it refers to that, it's very <clears throat> referring to the Jews that were scattered in the diaspora <clears throat> that was in all nations. And then notice verse number 4 through 17 is a, uh, a long section of scripture, but it's just a, it's no new information. But let's go ahead and look it over. Luke here is just uh, recounting what Peter said after he came back and they were upset with him because he had taken the kingdom gospel to a Gentile. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order of them saying, 
And again, I was in the city of Joppa. I was praying. I was in a trance. You remember, he was up on the top of the house and a certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet and it let down from heaven by four corners and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I fastened mine eyes, I considered, I saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Peter, arise, slay, and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. So obviously some of these creatures that was on this vessel that had been brought down, we've always understood it to be like a sheet that was tied by the four corners. <clears throat> obviously there was some unclean animals on there in the book of Leviticus <clears throat> forbade uh, the Jewish people from eating what was considered to be unclean. So he said, Lord, I, I can't, I, I can't do that. I've never, I, nothing unclean hath at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God hath cleansed, thou called thou not common. And this was done three times and all was drawn back up into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already coming to the house, um, where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And of course, we know the story. Cornelius had received a vision. A man in bright clothing came to Cornelius and said, you need to send men down to Simon the Tanner's house where Peter, uh, Simon, whose surname Peter is, and he will tell you what you need to do. So simultaneously, these men are coming down as Peter's receiving this vision up on the house. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Okay. He said that earlier, I went without gainsaying. In other words, just do what I told you to do. Moreover, six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. Speaking of Cornelius. And he showed how the Lord, he had seen an, an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them on a, as on us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God has given them the gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I? that I could withstand God. So again, these verses don't contain any, any new information, uh, but Peter is just simply recounting to them how it went down. And um, some have speculated, why would Luke spend so much ink uh, recounting this entire episode? Uh, but I believe that Luke was just being faithful to what happened. I mean, he told the story of Cornelius. He told what happened with Peter, and now Peter's come back, and they're contending with him, and they want to know why he did what he did, and Peter is telling them exactly what he did. Uh, so Peter's only conclusion was, you know, to the naysayers, what was I to do? I mean, what was I, you know, who was I to withstand God? I mean, it's obvious. I, I did what he told me to do, and who could argue with Peter in regards to that? I did what he told me to do. I went, I preached the word of God to them. And the Holy Spirit fell on them. And then, of course, we know that he baptized them. Um, now, lo notice in verse number 18, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now, notice when Peter finished his summation, of the events, they glorified God, and they recognized that God had granted repentance unto life to the Gentiles as well. However, please understand that what Cornelius and those who were with him had accepted was the kingdom gospel. That's all they knew. That's all Peter knew. Peter could not have given them something he did not have. Uh, this was not a grace through faith, not of work salvation. Okay, this was instead a grace through repentance and baptism salvation. Um, there's two gospels in the New Testament, what we call the New Testament. There is that gospel of grace through repentance and baptism, and, and all of its grace. Grace and faith are not new to 
of the New Testament. Grace and faith aren't new to um, to to the New Testament. I mean, grace and faith were uh, always a part of Jewish life. Grace, God was always granting grace. Again, you can mix grace with the law and still have law, but you can't mix law with grace and still have grace. So grace has always been there. God's always behaved or moved in grace toward people. Grace is, you know, getting, not getting what you, well, what's, what's the expression? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting more than you deserve. And the Lord knows he's given me many things more than I deserve. So grace is not new. Grace is not unique to the body of Christ. Neither, neither is faith. They've always been there. They're a part of both Gospels. Now, notice in verse 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to none but, notice, Jews only. You see, even though Peter had taken the gospel of the kingdom to Cornelius, a Gentile, and look what had to happen in order for him to do that. He literally had to receive a vision. He literally had to be told three times to do this. Why? Because Peter was not inclined to do that. Peter was not, Peter was told, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Even when the, the woman came and asked Jesus for healing, he said, is it, is it right for me to give uh, to the little dogs? In other words, I did. I came but for the house of Israel. I didn't come to Gentiles. I mean, this had been ingrained in Peter and the others. It took a vision three times for Peter to go because it was unnatural. He hadn't done it yet. And of course, God was showing Peter that he was doing something. He was moving. Acts chapter 9 through 13 is a is the transition point, the pivot point, if you will, of the book of Acts. We are moving ever so slowly, gradually. Years are accumulating here. We read the book of Acts like it happened one day to the next. It didn't. Okay, years are passing by. And there is a transition from Peter to Paul. Now we're getting ready to shift back to Paul. Um, there's a shift from Peter to Paul. There's a shift from the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of grace. There's a shift from Jerusalem to Antioch. And that shift takes place in the middle of the book of Acts. Thus, you get folks like me who are called mid-Acts in our dispensational theology. We're still dispensational, uh, but we're called mid-Acts dispensationalists because we do not think the body of Christ was born in Acts chapter number 2. Uh, instead, it was born with the revelation of the mystery to the Apostle Paul. Now, when that happened, we're not sure, but it was somewhere between uh, Acts 9 and 13. <coughs> because by the time he goes back to Jerusalem in chapter number 15, he has a fully developed gospel of grace. Okay, um, so uh, just for context, the stoning of Stephen had occurred at 33 AD, and we are now in 41 AD. That's eight years have gone by, and the apostles are preaching only to the Jews. Uh, because notice at the end of verse number 19, preaching the word to none but Jews only. Eight years after Pentecost, and they're preaching only to Jews. Okay? Uh, they were simply being obedient. Um, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Starting in Jerusalem. Then into Judea and Samaria. And of course they were spread into Judea and Samaria. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. But understand the context of that. That to them meant to Jew only. Not to Gentile, to Jew only. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Jews had to accept. They were the ones that were offered first the gospel of the kingdom. 
And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, they spoke unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed. Now, these that were scattered from Jerusalem, the same ones that are mentioned back up in verse number 19, now they which were scattered, and of course this came about after the persecution had arisen, and of course Saul played a hand in that and gave authority to the people to stone Stephen. Um, and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, they spake unto the Grecians, preaching what the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. So these are the same ones that were scattered from Jerusalem from verse number, number 19. Uh, and they came into contact, notice it says, with Grecians. Now, Grecians were Hellenistic Jews um, who were part of the diaspora. Um, we saw these guys first back in Acts chapter number 6. Um, you remember back in Acts chapter number 6 and verse number 1, And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. These Grecians were still Jews. They were what were called Hellenist or Hellenistic Jews. They were Jews that did not come back after the diaspora when Babylon, when they, when Babylon carried the Jewish nation or most of the Jewish nation away into captivity. And of course, we read that in Daniel. Daniel was a part of that diaspora, but not all of them returned. But Many, they were still practicing Jews, and they had come back to Jerusalem. They, they still were faithful to the mandatory feast. They were there, and many of them turned to the Lord while they were there. And, of course, it caused problems in Acts chapter number 6 when they, when they chose the first men to serve there. So these were, were simply non-Palestinian Jews whose ancestors had been carried away by Babylon, never returned. Therefore, they grew up outside of Jerusalem. And this is important because these are those spoken of in Acts 2. In Acts chapter number 2, where it talks about um, 7 and 8, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? These were Grecians. These were Jews that were raised outside of Israel whose first language was not Jewish. Their first language was the nations to which they were born. These were not Gentiles. Pentecost was not a Gentile event. It was a Jewish event. Okay? Um, and it was to these Jews that they were preaching the kingdom gospel. See back up here, some of them were men of Cyprus, Serene. When they came to Antioch, they spake to the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus, the kingdom gospel. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number of these Grecians turned to the Lord. Now, I'm building this because, interestingly, all the modern tra translations do not call these Grecians, but they translate it as Greeks. Which is interesting because when you come down here, Acts chapter number 20, and some of them were men of Cyprus, Serene, when they came, they spake to the Grecians. Okay, these Grecians, notice these Grecians here, are Hellenists. They are Greek-speaking Jews. Okay, they're Jews. But now the other translations, like if I go up here and I grab... Uh, the New American Standard, but there were some of them, men of Cyprus, Serena, came to Antioch and spake to the Greeks. Okay, That is a bit misleading because Greeks are Gentiles. Um, if you look in the, in the NAS, NASB+, Plus, they justify it because they take that word Hellenist and they translate it. It's in their 
underlying text. It's Helene, okay, which is Grecian, inhabitants of Hellas, Greek, a Greek-speaking person. And then they say a non-Jew, Gentile. So there's a difference there between the way the word is translated. Um, and I looked into this. Um, again, the issue is the underlying text. And I believe bias, of course. Because if you're going to say the church, the body of Christ was born in Acts chapter number 2, then you've got to say, you know, Cornelius was the first Gentile, and now they're preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. They're not preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. They are preaching the gospel to Grecians who were Jews, who lived outside of Israel. Um, so there's a misleading going on there. Only the King James, which comes from the received text, uses the word Hellenists, which is a Greek-speaking Jew, while the modern versions use a manuscript that uses the word Hellene, which is simply a Greek-speaking person. But you see how how the Bible translators can insert their bias into the translation. It's misleading. They are preaching to Grecians. They're not preaching to Greeks. So, um, anyway, I got bogged down in that quite some, for quite some time the other day while I was studying, but, uh, Worthy study. These guys are still preaching the gospel of the kingdom to Jew only. I mean, it says right here, um, to Jew only. So these are Grecians. They can't be Greeks. It, it's a, it's a uh, contradiction of the text to turn around and say that they were preaching to Greeks. They were preaching to Grecians, the same Grecians that contended with the Hel with the with the Hebrews uh, in Jerusalem. And trust me, there would not have been Greeks <laughs> contending with the Hebrews in Acts chapter number six because the Jews wouldn't have had anything to do with them. So, anyway, very interesting. So that concludes my study for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed. It's good to see you, uh, Donna. God bless you, um, Scott, Otis. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember Sunday morning, nine o'clock. I'll put all this together. We'll back up and uh, we'll uh, we'll do our study Sunday morning at nine a.m. I encourage you to keep studying the Word of God for yourself. See if these things be so. Um, I have found that the more answers I get, the more questions I get. It's been quite a journey. I would encourage you to come along on that journey as we work our way through the Book of Acts. God bless you guys. Hope that you have a great Friday. Remember, God loves you and wants the best for you. He's working all things out for your good.